Yoshi Araki was uh, is a Japanese photographer. He was born in 1940s. He's 75 years old and has had a long, long uh, career as a photographer, actually in, in different steps. Um, what you see here is literally the newest work. Uh, he finished shooting these images um, probably three weeks ago. Printed them himself, we FedExed them over here and hung them here. So it's a specific theme. Uh, so that's the newest, but he did start as a commercial photographer in Tokyo in the 60s taking pictures of refrigerators, of cars, and uh, working with the camera in a very commercial context. But during lunch hour, he would always run out into the Ginza district, the shopping district, and just take pictures of people. And he's, he's known in the West for a certain kind of imagery, mostly the erotic imagery, but that's really cutting it short because his passion is about life in general. As you can see here, the images of food, of his parents, of the ground, of the sky, of clouds, cityscapes. It's really wide ranging. Uh, a traditionalist, very material. He prints on paper. These are silver gelatin prints. He uses a um, SLR camera with film. He uses a, a, actually a small camera because it has the, the date imprint here. Um, so it's all analog. I think with the uh, with his career one day ending, that will also be the end of analog photography in a certain sense. People always think, oh, Araki, it's bondage imagery. And then they get all caught up in the, the, the idea of the sexuality, etc., etc. If If you try to define that kind of uh, uh, photography um, backwards, uh, just go on Google image search and put in bondage photography, Japanese bondage photography, and what you will see is it's this horrific photography, absolutely, I mean, amazingly bad. And then you appreciate, suddenly you appreciate the formal qualities of his photography. And then you become aware that this is not some any kind of random bondage, that this is also, this is very traditionalist. This is, you know, I always like to, it's like tea ceremony, obviously slightly different, but it is a very ritualistic bondage there are types of rope there are types of knots there are certain locations on your body that this can be applied to this is a very very formalized way of dealing with an eroticized body uh, and you see that quality in the photography when you go a, a little bit off his aesthetic then you really see where his aesthetic comes from and as much as these might seem uh, casual there, there is a formal a tradition in this that's very strong and that's recognizable. I have not seen any other photographer do it that way. The diaristic nature of this work is what complements his traditionalism. That's on the one side. He's really steeped in that tradition. The diaristic aspect is a really a radical departure. This was something where conceptually you put yourself as the artist in, uh, in the middle of the work, as the subject of the work. Uh, not out of self-aggrandizement, but to question your role in society. Who are you as a person, as a person with a camera, as an artist with a camera, as an artist? So that's really what, where diaristic work comes from and where he, he broke those boundaries of photography very early on, in the 70s already, and which puts him a bit outside the tradition of photography in that sense.